You know it's super fly. When Day Bar is open, hip hop review news, plus breaking new artists, pop culture, current events, with an urban view of it. This is all things hip hop. Delivered raw, unpolitically correct. The fans' perspective, putting all artists in check. Dope content, current hot sh by remarkable men. Our thoughts clearly. Welcome to Audio Theory. Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. Please hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe now. What's good? How you been, man? What is good, my dude? Yo, it is fucking freezing, quote-unquote, in sunny South Florida. I woke up to 51 degrees. I was like, bro, what is this? (laughs) Like, what is this? That's actually funny, because... I'm thinking of like my East Coast friends, and anytime I say it's cold, and I forget that I'm talking to someone who's like from the East Coast or there yeah, currently, the yeah, they're yeah, like, "What yeah. are you talking about? That's like summer over here." Yeah, I mean, I, I still went to the beach this morning and did like my a beach workout with my boss, but I don't know, bro. 51 degrees definitely just feels different. Like it's a that's how people get like sick, sick, bro. Because like it was just 85 on Monday, so to go to from that to 51 in three in two days is pretty fucking aggressive. Yeah, out here in LA, it's I'm gonna check now, but it's definitely been freezing. It's 63 right now and like 55 at night, down to four. Yeah. Oh shit, 48 at like 6 a.m. So yeah, it's, cool. it's pretty. Yeah, it's cold as fuck. But I, I have a shit ton of coats and jackets in my closet that I never wore for like eight months, so I'm kind of fine with it. Yeah, so I'm going. I'm actually booking my ticket tonight. So I'm going to New York for uh for Christmas and New Year's. I just keep all my cold, sh- my winter shit up there, so it kind of works out perfectly. But yeah, I mean, all I got is hoodies down here. But yeah, I mean, I was still wearing shorts today. I'm like, I don't know, like, you know, like it's like I'm wearing a, a hoodie, shorts, and flip flops. Like I don't know what the <laughs> fuck's happening. <laughs> That's like me too. Like part of me is like, all right, maybe I'll just keep the top warm, but I still wear sh- uh, shorts yeah, at home still, all day and it's still sandals. Summer, like- or yeah. It still feels like summer most of the time. Yeah, yeah. But how you been, dude? What's the uh, what's latest with you? Uh, symptom wise, it's like what three weeks removed now. Like are you feeling fully recovered? Like give us an update. Yeah. Um. So yeah, at this point, I'm pretty much fully recovered. Knock on wood. Haven't really had any symptoms. Um. So for me, at least, it's kind of like a long gone thing. Not mm-hmm. really. Uh. Too worried about long term effects at this point. Knock on wood again but we'll see but for now i'm like 100 percent in the clear nice. hopefully i'm still immune to it so at some point i kind of want to get an antibody test just to, to see since yeah dude, i want to do it too man just it just makes sense yeah because i i actually uh learned that my roommate similar to you one of them thinks she had it way back in like january or something so oh really yeah if that is okay. the case then but even then i heard you can like you're only technically immune for like a few months so i don't know if it's like if it yeah, goes but back I feel like with the test though it just gives you that sense of confidence going outside yeah you know what i mean like it's just like, like I, I survived I mean, this once yeah yeah like i i survived once like if, uh-huh. I, I, i'm not too worried about going to a crowd of people and stuff like that yeah yep nice. um, but you're fully recovered you feel good um yeah, how's good. your brother doing he's did he end up taking any more of those like somewhat vaccine program that he was talking about no so it's just like a one-time thing and then the nurse will come to his place and follow up uh every day for 30 days just to be like oh how do you feel now sort of thing um and he i believe is fully recovered now he tested negative for the first time like a week ago or something basically he, he was positive like a week longer than me but that i don't think that necessarily means you're contagious um I don't know the science behind it, but I think you can, it can technically like linger within you, uh, for, for different people. Um, mm-hmm. you might test positive longer. So it's, yeah, it's a very, very weird disease. Like you, it's, uh, like an Easter egg. Like you don't know what the fuck you're going to get. Yeah. But, but how do you feel about, so I think they just, uh, the UK just approved for the vaccine to go public next week. Um, and bro, the only reason why I know this shit, bro, it's like I keep getting these alerts on my like stocks that like are fucking uh-huh. going through the roof. And it's just like anytime there's any news of like Pfizer or whoever, like you know, it's gonna come out soon. It's like like stock market is going like yeah. this pandemic doesn't make any fucking sense, bro. So, um, what are your yeah. thoughts on the UK um, rolling this out in a week or so? Yeah, um, I'm I'm still like super 
apprehensive and hesitant on taking it. I actually saw an article and I'm pretty sure it said the CDC said the vaccine is quote unquote, no uh, walk in the park. And I didn't read the article to see what that meant, but I, I do believe it means like there's a chance like you will get sick or you will feel uncomfortable and have symptoms, but not necessarily, you know, to the level of someone who straight up has the disease. Yeah. But from what I, I haven't really seen anything like super positive, like vaccine is, you know, definitely going to work and you're going to be, you know, it's just like a flu shot. You're going to just walk out of there fine, maybe a little soreness for like 20 minutes or some shit. Like, I haven't seen anything that has convinced me, uh, especially with the fact that I already had it, that has convinced me that I want to take it anytime soon. I feel like I want to wait, like once it's been out for like a solid year and like no one's died or fucking grown like yeah. a fourth ar or third arm or something, then I'll be like, all right, cool. Like if I need this to go to this post malone concert or something then cool yeah man i feel the same way dude like um i go back to like all the other viruses we have in a, like in u.s or not even the world history and you're just telling me this thing's been out for nine months and we were able to just like that to make it happen but people have been dying from aids and cancer and the common cold is still a thing and yeah. I, I get I get the severity of it. Like, hey, this one needs to happen because everyone's being affected, not a certain demographic or, you know, gene deformity. But I don't know. It just the not the conspiracy in me, but like the like the I don't know, pessimistic in me is like, bro, like, really? Like we could just have this shit like that? Like yeah. y'all really fucking hate us, okay? Y'all just yeah. trying to make money off us. Like <laughs> So, like, it's like, oh, we, we need this. Otherwise, they can't go online and shop for, you know, Cyber Monday, blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, so, yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I, yeah, same. Like, I think I, I'm pretty sure I already had it. I want to take an antibody test before I go back to New York. So, I'll probably do that next week. But, yeah, it's just, uh, I would definitely wouldn't take it for at least a year, two years. And I feel like I need to know someone who takes it and, like, they're straight. As opposed to just some like, oh yeah, the general public. I'm like, fuck general public, bro. Like, yeah. I don't know them, so I need to know someone. Yeah, yeah. I know some people are advocates of it. I mean, a lot of people are. Well, a lot of people as in Lupe Fiasco. So I, I, I tune into his live quite a bit. And yeah, yeah. He made a post today. He's like, yeah. yo, let's get it. You're gonna have, you're gonna require this to go to one of my concerts, just so you know. Yeah, so that's yeah. And his thing was, he was saying, hey, you guys, you don't need a vaccine, and people were like okay what is he gonna lead into this with and he said you don't need a vaccine if you actually follow the guidelines of wearing a mask social distancing you know not leaving your house except for essential things and things like that and he's like but nobody's doing that shit so since you motherfuckers want to be outside you know going to the gym and doing this and that he's like there is no other choice at this point that was his rationale yeah i'm so afraid of a super side wolf effects, theory huh? yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah there's, yeah. there's no way I'm doing it though. There's no. I mean, again, not. I'm not saying not ever, but in this that first year, there's no way, bro. Like yeah. I will just. I'd rather go take a test every time I need to go out somewhere mm -hmm. than have to fucking put some shit in my body that God knows is gonna happen. So for sure. And the tests are pretty simple. I do the. I don't know how it is in Florida, but the ones I've done, 99% of them have been a, like a two-second mouth swab. And then I'll oh, no. So the here it's day. the, uh, here it's the, um, up your nostril, 10 seconds, spin around your brain, pull it out, <laughs> 10 seconds, spin around your brain, pull it out. So uh -huh. again, it's only like fucking two minutes of your life. Like, it's fine, bro. Like, I've never been waiting. Like, I've never been in a situation where like, I'm in line waiting for hours on end to get a test done. Like, that's never happened. So yep. I just make an appointment with my local urgent care and like, I'm in and out. Um, and thus far, I actually think it's been pretty, I think it's been like free through my insurance. So it's good. Dope. Yeah, um, dope. But I, I just realized, bro, our last episode was pre Thanksgiving, bro. So how was the Thanksgiving festivities? How was your socially distanced turkey eating? Like, walk us through that, and I'll hop in into like what I got into. Yeah. So my girl and I, we, we actually got back from Cabo like four days before Thanksgiving. Um, it was pretty wild to see how lax. A lot of the people were out there like mm. a cesspool of like fucking 50 people just you swear covid didn't exist and of course they were from the like you know trump supporting area of california come to find yeah. out not that i have anything against trump supporters but like there is truth to some stereotypes like i don't care if it's about yeah, race or whatever 
there's a lot of truths that's why they exist it's just that people unfortunately generalize but yeah it was, it was just wild to see i of course didn't take pictures of that because i don't need that energy from people who follow me on instagram saying like oh like what the fuck are you doing because oh, 90 <laughs> yep and 90 percent of these people don't uh know i had covid so they, they're probably looking at me like oh look at this irresponsible motherfucker but yeah uh my girl and i were still safe just to be safe because you know we don't know how this disease really works and then we came back i got tested twice before seeing my family obviously nice, came back neg negative um it was a really tame uh thanksgiving no like you know how all the memes are kind of insinuating there's yeah. gonna be all this beef over the election and shit like not a not a single word about politics maybe like came up once but i, I don't think there was really much political talk food was bomb i don't know why but i couldn't eat as much as i normally did used to oh um, it was the opposite man i yeah. way too much oh, <laughs> And I never got leftovers. Um, this is the first time I hadn't lived uh, with family. So normally I'd be that the same dude getting a plate every 10 minutes. Yeah. But this time I was like, right, I'm going to be, you know, classy and let someone else eat the, the goods. Um, but yeah, it was super chill, man. Um, good to see my family. And what else was I going to say? Um, I forget. But yeah, it was it was it was relatively uh you know chill? Chill. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, dude. So mine was good, man. Mine was just like I took a look back at my week and then I had to look at my last three weeks of like existence. Bro, Sunday, like the Sunday before work to this past Sunday, bro, I was physically, mentally exhausted, bro. Cause like I mean, you know me pretty well. I say this to a lot of people, they don't believe me. I'm naturally a very introverted person. Like, I get my energy from being home alone. So when I go out to be amongst people, like, you know, it's, it's not that overwhelming for me, bro. So one, I had my best friend Billy here for two weeks, right? So that's not exhausting, but I just naturally feel, hey, someone's in my house. I'm technically hosting. I have to be on, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I have to be ready for conversation, blah, blah, blah. Even though Billy and I are very good about, like, yo, we could be in the same room. We could not speak for eight hours. And you would ask him, yo, did you have a good time? Bro, best time ever, right? Like, there's no need to be. But yeah. still mentally, there's something about, yo, you have to be, like, on, you know, you have friends and family visiting, right? Yeah. So then I was I dealt with the house, the breakup, all that stuff. Um, so that took its toll on me as well, you know, highs and lows, blah, blah, blah. Dude, but then I went to, I drove to Orlando. We were only there for two, two nights. Uh, my brother and sister are also somewhat introverted, so I just naturally felt like, right, let me take the lead on this, let me fucking be the one, you know, that gets us going, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I had to drive right back, so that's a four-hour drive there, four-hour drive back after two days. Then I had one of my boys visiting from New York, bro. So I'm like, let me go hang out with him in Miami. That's an hour drive away, hour drive back. And then I went on a, uh, on a date that weekend, and I was just like, bro, I even told the girl, I was like, man, like, I hope that like I'm not like boring or anything right now because I just felt fucking weak. Luckily, we know it was it was super chill. Um, but yeah, bro, like Sunday, I, I, like when I my head hit the pillow, I was like, bro, what a long fucking week, bro. Because like it just felt like so much happened. But uh -huh. uh, Thanksgiving itself was great, man. It was my sister's a fucking superwoman. She cooked, she cleaned, she fucking went all out. Um, Did you no guys do turkey. karaoke? We did karaoke, bro. Okay, I uh, that. Yeah, we did karaoke. We drank a lot. We, uh, we had edibles. Like, yeah, it was just a fucking great time. Um, but yeah, it was just a lot happened there so quickly. And then to turn around in two days to drive four hours back home just like felt like a lot. So, um, you know, this week, a couple people like try to hit me up to hang out already. And I'm like, man, I, I'm not trying to be a dick, but like, bro, not happening. Like, <laughs> just not. Yeah. I need to fucking get into my, like, I need to get centered. Uh, I had my first therapy session after all this stuff happened. So, like, that was good for me. Just, like, you know, reassurance that uh, you're doing, you're on the right path. You know, listen to your body, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, yeah, man, Thanksgiving was great. But, yeah, I just felt the weekend uh, as a whole, I wish I would have taken a couple of days just to, like, breathe as opposed to being, like, you know, nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Yeah. Um, but one of the best things about that night um, – is the uh, or that that week dude did you get it you ordered the fight right or you watched the fight no uh, i fucking went through i like i was so 
dead set on not paying for it that well my my i'm on huh I you for that bitch, man. yeah i know like, the funny thing is you were the link. you were the second person that i literally messaged and they were like fuck i literally bought it like 30 seconds ago dude i i know <laughs> dude literally 30 seconds ago i'm like are you fucking kidding me like yeah. bro oh my god it's all good dude. it's only 50 yeah. bucks but yeah it's all good yeah, my so my my cousin and a couple of brothers were on like this little thread. Originally, it was for UFC shit I never watch, but like if it's a huge fight like Conor McGregor or whatever, I'll always tune in. And I was like, I, I, I'm already on this thread. I might as well use, you know, the these hidden links. And I yeah. one of them was on YouTube. I don't know how this did. did, did uh, dude, oh wow, that's that, super aggressive. That shit got taken off though. I was like, this is too good to be true. Um, yeah, there's no that's way that like lasts ten minutes. Not even like during the Tyson. It was like the, you know, the nobody uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. fights like fucking five hours before or whatever. Um, but yeah, fortunately got a link to work and and watch the whole thing. Bro, what a fucking event! So I tuned in at ten o'clock. So yeah, right when you texted me, I just bought it. So the first fight I saw was the white guy, not the Nate and Jake Paul one. The one before that, like the the Irish white guy and the black. And that fight was okay. Nothing crazy. But then, bro, just the host, we'll get into the different fights, but the whole spectacle of, like, dude, it was like a concert that had fights in between. Like, yo, this yeah. was fucking great. Like, this is probably the best pay-per-view I've ordered in quite some fucking time. Like, the Jake Paul and Nate Robinson fight was hysterical. Like, hysterical. Like, yeah. Little Man was really, like, Napoleon Complex. Like, whatever training he was doing for the past four months just went out of his mind. He let me just fucking bum rush him and yo, know, Jake Paul caught him with a couple yeah. fucking booms and it, it was did a look like a street brawl. Like I, I got street I, brawl vibes from it. Not I mean, I'm sure they could both whip my ass in a boxing match, but like the, just you there's a certain uh what's the, the phrase I'm looking for? A certain there was like, no, like science um, or like Yeah, like there was no science fluidity to, their to approach. it. Like, yeah. No, like, no, like no finesse, like none mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. And immediately I was just like, all right, this, this is not going to end well for one of them because, you know, when like, you know, skill boxers like Tyson and um, what's his name? Uh, damn, I hey, forgot his name. No, uh, the dude he actually fought. Um, oh, Roy, Roy Jones. Jones. Roy Jones. Um, when they fight, like, it's all about, you know, stamina and like making it last long and everything. Whereas like when inexperienced dudes fight, it's like, I'm trying to knock this dude out. But the now. problem is one, like literally one good punch could take your ass out like no matter how like tough you mm -hmm. think you are if this dude catches you in the temple or whatever like this lights out and i think that's why these like more amateurish fights are so funny is because this is what happened yeah dude and our boy nate got knocked the fuck out um the memes were phenomenal the uh the way the nba players turned on him like whoa whoa, whoa you ain't re representing us like that was <laughs> fucking great like, bro, I was telling you when we were texting about, like, I really hope this dude is strong mentally because he was getting dogged on social media. Like, dogged. Um, so, yeah, I hope I hope he's doing fine. But it was weird to me, bro. We can get to it now. Like, how, like, the media was – certain parts of, the, like, the black media was, like, getting on black athletes who were, like, like cheering on Jake Paul. Like, you just – like, because you're black, you automatically have to root for the black fighter. Like, what the yeah. fuck? Honestly, I was, I was happy for Jake Paul, and I think it's I'm always uh, I kind of gravitate towards the underdogs, like the most hated person. Yeah. And I knew what level of like discipline and shit it it would take for someone like him to actually compete and like be good. You know, it's not like he, yeah. he cheated or whatever. Like he he did his thing. And yeah, it is weird how like the black community like you can't. If there's a black person going up against a white person, like you absolutely cannot choose the white dude's side, even yeah, though it's really not like that, that serious. It's not that serious, but first of all, it's an amateur fucking fight. Like they're lucky; they just want to get paid, bro. Like they don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was funny how like a couple like black athletes, like dog names, like yo, how you turn against them? He's one of us. Have his back. I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up, bro. Like yeah. it's not that deep, bro. Like it's yeah. hilarious. Like yeah. Um, then they're doing the fucking the Nate challenge where you're just fucking landing on the play on the floor just like I'm like bro. <laughs> you see the one with the yeah. uh, they had him uh, on the store on the floor with uh, the Toy Story toys and it was like when Andy comes into the room. When Andy, yeah. yeah, that was good. <laughs> they had the one where he's laying and then like uh, baby Simba's like 
hitting him like, uh-huh. Gustavo, wake up, daddy, wake up. <laughs> I was like, bro, they dogged him, bro. But yeah. dude, again, that's I mean, that's the risk you take in any fight, bro. Like, you could have a plan, but yeah, you get hit that first time, that plan goes out the fucking window. So, um, do but you bro, think that's why? Go ahead. Sorry to cut you off, but do you think that's why most of these popular rappers, you know, when they get into beefs and someone randomly is like, just get in the ring, like, you know, we'll make it happen, and everyone's getting paid and shit. Do you think deep down the rappers are really afraid they're gonna, they might lose? As opposed yeah, to like, oh, I can just kill this dude and it'll be over with. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if they go that deep with it, but I think they're more and like I don't want to get embarrassed, right? That's why a lot of those like those those guys don't even sign up for those celebrity basketball games because like yo, I don't want to look embarrassed out there looking fucking stupid dribbling the ball up and down a court compared to like real basketball players. So yeah, yeah I'm sure that has to be a part of it, bro. They don't want to look silly that you know they're beefing with some guy who they actually beefing with. And he gets them with one punch and you're fucking knocked out in front of everyone to see. Because, yo, I really think, bro, the numbers for that uh, pay-per-view were crazy. Like, a lot of people are watching that shit. So, yeah, I don't. I think a lot of people just are try, aren't trying to get embarrassed. But what yeah. were your thoughts on the main event, bro? Um, and I'm not talking about Snoop Dogg performing because that was also a fucking movie. And we'll get to that in a second. But the main event of uh, Roy Jones Jr. versus Mike Tyson. I'm not going to lie, I was disappointed and didn't even watch the full thing i was kind of multitasking really? and okay, okay. maybe i i think the expectation set in general just seeing all the videos of tyson like just jabbing like a fucking dragon ball z character made everyone think oh he's literally gonna murder this dude with like three punches in the beginning and it's gonna be over with to me it was like too skilled but clearly uh older dudes you know kind of reliving the glory moment which was dope to see but i i expected definitely like more uh i don't know highlights or like something crazier to take place it just seemed like very a very good back and forth for however long it lasted and that was kind of and then there was a draw which a lot of people think was scripted or staged. And, oh, that was definitely scripted. Unless someone right. got knocked out, that was definitely scripted. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I took it the opposite, bro. I thoroughly enjoyed the uh, the main event only because, like, Tyson looked amazing, bro. Like, taking into context, he's 54 years old. He did not look like a 54-year-old, bro. He looked like a late 30s, you know, early 40 year Like, yo, he was moving around, and he was throwing fucking punches. Mm-hmm. Whereas Roy Jones Jr., to me, looked every bit of a 51 year old bro he looked kind of sloppy like you can't call him fat but he's definitely not in shape yeah and then that signature punch he throws where he's like looking away and then punches Uh like that works when you're 30 and you have power behind it but when you're 51 and terrified of getting hit by the other guy you just look stupid so like i think he ruined the fight because he wasn't trying to fight he was like yo i'm not gonna fucking die tonight because, dude, even in the, the interviews, they're like, yo, would you fight it again? He's like, well, I'll ask my family. We'll see. I'm like, bro, I'm telling you, if it wasn't for Roy Jones constantly trying to grab Tyson and, like, get him from punching, bro, I think Tyson would have knocked his ass out, bro. Because that shit, from, at least from Tyson's point of view, for me, that was very impressive. Because, mm-hmm. yo, I don't know a lot of 54-year-olds that move that fast and are throwing that aggressively, bro. Because when he did connect with his body... I feel like you heard that shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, in terms of being an athlete, I mean, obviously Tyson looked like the uh, the more skilled competitor, but I, I'm with both of the, both of them because when I think about their age, I'm like, yo, that's like basically everyone we know is like parents' age, and yeah, you know, when you think of like our parents, like there's no way they could ever. But we can imagine them even doing some shit like this. There's no way our parents are losing 100 pounds at the age of 54. Mm-hmm. Like, that is fucking crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, bro. Like, that shit is, uh, that was a hell of a thing. But then we have to go into the overall experience of watching that fight. Bro, St. John was great. I think, well, I think he was great. It was a great moment for him. I don't think he sounded great. Um, because, again, it's... Uh, Dude, unless you're fucking Travis Scott, who has the best engineers when he travels, like, bro, auto-tune artists don't, just don't sound good live. Like, they mm-hmm. just don't. Like, it's a fucking fact, right? Yeah. So I didn't even realize that's how much auto-tune he uses, but I guess it is, bro, because he just didn't sound good. 
bro, but Snoop Dogg was fucking flawless. Like, just so good. Um, commentating on the fight, but then when he performed, like, his four or five hits, bro, like, you tell me how... That was just so impressive to me. I... When I sat down and I watched Snoop, in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna... This is gonna be entertaining, but it's gonna be whatever. Like, I you know his boring. songs. Yeah, I'm like, I've heard his songs a thousand times, so has everyone else. And I'm gonna like it, but I'm not gonna, you know, be blown away. I'm like, there's just no way it's gonna happen. And it, like, I'd say like, after the f first song completed and like it transitions to the next one and shit, like, it was just so, it was choreographed or whatever, so smoothly and perfectly. And like, all the, the shit talking in between and like, and there's not a crowd, right? There's no crowd there. There's no crowd. And the way he was acting was as if he was speaking to fucking, well, he was technically broadcasting it to that many people, but you would swear there was a hundred thousand people in front of him. And he was just like, yeah, all swagged out, clearly older, but like still the same charisma and stuff. It was super dope. And yeah. He smashed dude. everyone, every single song. Yeah. That was so impressive to me, dude. So, and I love the way they blacked out everything. So you didn't see the empty arena. Uh -huh. But the way they use the different, like, uh, screens behind them and make it, yo, know, that shit was, yeah, that was an experience, bro. Because I even, I ordered the fight a, an hour and a half late. And I still feel like I got every cent of my money's worth while yeah. watching that shit, bro. So, shout yeah. out to, I think it's called Triller. Um, Triller, yeah. Uh, Network, I still don't yeah, understand what that app is. Is it like TikTok? I don't, know, I, I don't know, bro. I'm just glad I had that shit on my PS4 to download because I, I don't have cable. So, I was like, damn, how am I going to watch this shit? But, yeah, yeah bro, that, that was a fucking great experience. Uh, Nate went Nate Nate. But, um, dude, <laughs> that was phenomenal. That was yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Um, all right, bro. So let's get, let's get into it. Episode 54. Ton of shit in this fucking rundown. So let's run through it. Um, I feel like uh, we were going to start with this a different way. But I feel like that's the great thing of like news just constantly happening. Dude, I feel like the biggest news is all this Casanova, now G Herbo. Like, I don't know if the, the, the hip hop police are back. Mm -hmm. But holy shit. If these allegations are true for both these dudes, especially Casanova. Yo, these motherfuckers going away for a very long time. Yeah. So, I, mean, uh, I think you have a little bit more information than me. So tell the people kind of what happened in uh, both situations. Yeah, it's still pretty early for me. Um, with Casanova, I believe he got caught up with some racketeering shit. Um, I'm just gonna say, like, it may be similar to like what Six Six Nines Click was into, just all kinds yeah, of shit. Yeah. So like, yeah, murder, yeah. drugs, extreme yeah. forms of violence. Um, all over New York. I think it's, I think racketeering, it's tied to organized crime. That's like the differentiator, right? So okay. there's like a higher penalty because it's like organized or whatever. Okay. Um, and apparently he's on the run. Um, obviously we know that's, that won't last forever. And it's yeah, crazy. Cause he was, IG it. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and he came back from prison, I think a few years ago and he had a pretty solid music career ever since has songs with Chris Brown. Had a yeah. couple of hits and was like under 50 cents wing, I think, for a minute. Like, because he, I don't know, I get like 50 yeah, cents. That could be a gift because so was 6'9", technically, and that shit didn't work yeah, out. That's true. What if, yeah, what if 50 is behind all this? Like, um, what is he like the puppet yeah. master? Just like, yeah, yeah. Sign your life away. Like, you know, yeah. Well, but, uh, but yeah, he'll yeah. be fucked because he already served time for, I don't know if like he's on probation. I really don't know the legality. Uh, legalities behind all this sorts of all these sorts of gang related crimes but yeah it's not a good look for him unfortunately that could yeah I think it could even be life or something I feel or, like for it's, him it's life mm -hmm. it'd be life and I think for the G Herbal thing that just came out today what they were using fake IDs yeah fake and IDs and, to, and giving people exotic pets uh, for private and sending private jets to villas in Jamaica and all kinds of shit. I didn't even know that was like a thing. I don't yeah, know, I understand how people get into this, but that's crazy. Yeah, dude. And then I also like, I think one of them, I was, I don't know if it was Herbal or Casanova who was like, they were caught for trying to like embezzle like COVID relief money for themselves. Like, I'm like, bro, like, aren't you guys like successful rappers? Like, yeah. are you just not making money from music and this is like what you have to do? Well, that's what I don't understand. And I've, I've been trying to like, um, I don't know, research on YouTube or I always tap into videos because I'm sure, you know, artists 
like, let's say T.I. or um, Snoop or whatever. Like, I'm, I doubt that they're, you know, still funding gang related shit like directly and doing all this because they don't need to. Like, you know, if anything, they might hit up, you know, give some money directly to the gang and be like, do whatever. But yeah, I don't see them funding shit like this. But it seems like these artists, maybe I don't know if it's a Chicago thing or what, but it seems like they do like they're waiting either to reach mega stardom like a drake or yeah they're just like so tied into it like it's their family and they're the people that protect them they're like i just gotta fund this shit and that's just the way it is but i wonder if they're like surprised or if this is some shit from like 10 years ago and they're like that just came up yeah it just came up or if it's like shit they've actively been you know facilitating like the past two years or something yeah, dude, I wonder too, bro. Especially the Casanova one. I mean, well, I guess I'm more surprised about the G Herbal thing because I think he's a bigger artist. But his crimes don't seem outrageous. They just seem like dumb. You know what I mean? Whereas the Casanova one, again, he's not a, the biggest artist in the world, but dude, he's pretty well known, especially like in New York. Yeah. And you're doing this shit, like, bro, you're like essentially like the fucking like a like a like a hip hop mafia. Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck are you doing? Like, this is yeah. like. Dude, if any of that shit that he got charged for is accurate, bro, that shit is bad. Yeah. So it's well, just it says crazy aiding. How, like, so aiding? yeah, aiding. It said it was count uh, two counts of aiding and abetting aggravated identity theft. So in my mind, I feel like the rappers. That's for G Herbo. Yeah, G Herbo. I think yeah. they like fund this shit and like do their best to, to stay removed from it. But like, if the evidence and like is just like and just like collect it on the investment yeah. of like whatever money they make I think. yeah so I'm saying, i don't think g herbal's thing's gonna end up being that bad it just looks bad like that initial like you know the feds are coming but the casanova shit to me looks bad like if that shit comes back that it's like any of that's true yeah you know, he's going away for a, a minute bro because that shit would look yeah. bad and i heard those cases are uh pretty much like a rap like there's nothing unless you straight up snitch like there's no way you're gonna fight anything well, let's see what happens then. Yep. <laughs> yep. Things are about to get interesting then. Uh, well, funny enough, great segue again by you, the king of segues. Uh, dude, I watched the uh, 6 9 documentary. And like now that we've both seen, I kind of want to get back into that conversation we had last week. Bro, so what I took from a couple things, bro. So one, I didn't realize this dude's been around for like since like 2014 trying to get famous. Mm -hmm. Like that, that took me aback. I was like, damn, like in my mind, that was like a 2017, 2018 kind of thing. So yeah. like so Gummo basically is when you started paying attention. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I started paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know anything about him before. So to see that this has been like seven years in the making and bro, it looks like this dude, every time you think he's out, he figures out some way to get back in. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it, every time, bro, he was with scum gang, they fucking got rid of him. Uh, something else, they got rid of him. Uh, he said, fuck Treyway, they got, you know what I mean? Like, all this yeah. crazy shit. But, at the, what I kind of felt bad for myself was, is that, dude, if you go back to some of our previous episodes when we're talking about, like, dude, this shock value shit's not gonna work, it has to be about the music, blah, blah, blah. Dude, that documentary made me realize, bro, for him, this was never about the music. Yeah. Like, this was only about... Yeah, I need he said to his famous. music was trash. Yeah, I, my music is trash, my videos are fucking fire. Like, bro, that's... But then that's, like, to me, again, as, like, an older head, I'm like, then you're wasting my time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you're yeah. wasting my time. Because I generally thought on, like, on a low level, like, yes, he's crazy, but, bro, he's talented. But mm -hmm. it, it felt... Like, look at the documentaries, like, bro, he fell into some hits... But his craziness is what really made them fucking more popular than they really were. Yeah, and it's unfortunate too because I don't. I honestly don't think all of his music's trash. Like a lot of this past oh, album, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Songs, but... The songs that the album that has uh, Gummo and yeah. Kiki and Billy. Like, yo, there's like a few of those songs I fucking still bump now. But it makes me think like, yo, this, so who wrote that shit for him? Is he even like, you know what I mean, like? You didn't even like after the documentary, bro. You're like, damn, you you never even wanted to be a rapper. You just wanted to yeah. be like the limelight. Like, yeah. you never really wanted to. Yo, I want to write these lyrics because this is who I am. I want people to know my story. Like, yo, you you really don't have a story to tell. It's just how can I get as many fucking eyes on me as possible at all fucking times? Mm -hmm. 
And then, yeah, bro, I mean, yeah, and the, the shit that, you know, he was constantly throwing people under the bus. He didn't give a fuck. Um, so, yeah, no, dude, like, honestly, that shit had me, had me having le- way less um, sympathy for him by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, after I saw it, I was just like, I mean, you know, this is someone who wants attention. I, I still find it odd that the the, the Treyway gang would, uh, the Nine Trey gang would um, kind of, I understand why they would, uh, kind of co-sign him and bring him in to like make the money and chill with him and shit but in terms of like allowing him to put out hits or saying rob this dude or this and that like i feel like that was a huge mistake like i don't understand how they didn't see you know this uh potential incident where you know they might get caught up and then six nine of course is yeah but remember they, these guys were seeing money they'd never seen before in their lives though bro that money was yeah. coming in from all those fucking youtube videos like going fucking billions and billions of fucking views bro so yeah yeah dude like shoddy was fucking apparently really a nobody in that gang and then he became apparently the ceo it's like uh no you're not like you know what i mean so yeah like, bro, and the shit that they were doing in broad daylight in New York City, I'm like, what? That's what I'm like, saying, though. I'm like, you're you're getting all these eyeballs on you, and now you're doing crazier shit? I mean, I've never had this level of attention, nor, nor do I want it, but maybe they were just so clouded by it. Maybe when you get that much money that quickly, you literally think you're invincible. You're like, I could buy my way out of anything. Dude, that had to be it, right? Like, dude, like, yeah, especially because you, you keep not getting caught. The one that had me dying on the floor, bro, or like, more like in shock, was when him and Casanova got into that beef at the Barclays uh-huh. and shots rang out. And then the first thing he did once he got out was go on IG Live calling like them a bitch. I'm like, bro, are you, what? Like, bro, that's not even your life. Like, why are you so enamored with pretending like, oh, my God, bro, that shit was hysterical and like sad to me on so many fucking levels. But I do see the angle they were trying to portray towards the end, like, like he just really needed someone to like just fucking shake him out of it. Yeah. But bro, I feel like I also at some point, yeah, he's a kid, but damn, at some point you gotta fucking just you know own that yo, you did some really fucked up shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know if he can ever do that because he's so far gone now. It's like he his success is all based on not being apologetic not saying he was wrong not saying he went too far he's already like triple down quadruple down on saying they try to fuck my girl or you know chief keith said this so that's why i put the hit and all this other shit like i I feel like he's convinced himself there's a justification for every single action he had and i never like uh wanted to hopefully i didn't in any past episodes Never wanted to like endorse that behavior, but it's more so kind of like, well, everyone around him should, this should be easily, uh, oh, be easily aware for the quote unquote like real niggas around him who, yeah, uh, who are doing all this shit with him or allowing him to do it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy to me, bro. It's crazy to me. And I, the, the the best part was when he showed up to, like, the gumbo video and started passing out new oh, yeah. uh, bandanas. And the mom, or the, was it the and mom the or the auntie? Like, the grandma. Like, what the fuck are yeah. you doing here? That was Who hilarious. Remember when she was like, you could see my face in the video, like, I was so yeah. confused. And she's like, yeah. looking around, fuck. Like, yo, it's and she never still like has this year. Yeah. Yeah, she's so fucking <laughs> handsome. Um, but what was funny, well, not funny, but, yo, I didn't realize that. They, they were breaking it down how, like, in the video, he wasn't a blood yet. And then in the next videos, you see him throwing up different gang signs because he was finally initiated into being, you know, part of them and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I yeah, mean, it, that, that was crazy to me. Yeah, I think it all boils down to human nature. Like, he, who wouldn't want to be a millionaire who's associated with a hardcore organization and not have to actually hurt anybody or get hurt half the time? Yeah, dude, the, 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 yeah, the power, just having that power is a yeah. fucking dangerous drug, bro. Yeah. I have all this power. I didn't have to do shit, but make a few songs. And I have like 40 people around me at any given time that, are, that will kill you if you yeah. try to touch and me. I say, like, and I say, suck my dick. And like, my boys are going to go mm-hmm. fuck you up right now. Like, yeah. bro, but what was crazy was, I don't remember, I think his name was Irv or the one who kidnapped him. But then was on social media like right before saying it's happening. 
I want all the smoke. And then an hour later, went and kid, I'm like, bro, y'all just fucking give everyone, like, yo, like, like, attention is no a drug. Bro, there's no need to have lawyers. It's like, bro, yeah. like, yo, just go on their Instagram live. There's all the proof you need. Yeah. No, it's like that. I mean, I know you haven't watched it. That shit is long as hell, but it's like that King Von uh, mm. thing. Uh, the King Von story I showed you and like the Chicago rappers. Granted, they they weren't like superstars or like anything at that point. So maybe they figured they can incriminate themselves and no one's going to give a shit. But they're straight up saying, you know, I have five bodies. I have 10 bodies. I shot this dude. I should kill this one. And it's, it's like uh, people posting their fucking Angry Birds scores on instagram yeah. or whatever it's like they everyone just in general is so desperate to like prove that they're worthy and prove their status and defend themselves that they end up proving it to the wrong person and when it's like the fbi and shit and you get taken away i mean maybe they want want that to happen and it makes them get even more credit i don't know but it just doesn't the logic doesn't uh, Dude, especially when it ends up with like literally everyone on that fucking bulletin board is like 35 to life, 28 to life, 26 to life, and then fucking 6 9 chilling at a fucking strip club, like not giving a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's man. wild to me. I'll, I'll yeah. never understand. I'll never understand it, bro. And then like, it, it made me think of myself though, like when sometimes, like when we're out celebrating and I'll like just grab my phone to just post it, but then I'm like, like, what is, like, the algorithm in my head? Like, why is that the way that I'm wired? You know what I mean? Like, that's, like, the... It's one thing to take a picture to remember the moments. I wonder, like, if it's more about the nostalgia of it to remember it later. But, like, dude, when these motherfuckers are legit, like, doing criminal activity and you're grabbing your phone to let the world know what you just did, I'm just like, bro, what are you telling yeah. yourself for? I think like, you just want the validation that, like, it's dope. Like, for instance... I mean, we both went on trips recently and I posted it, you posted your stuff. Um, but I think it's like, one, you're happy. So you want to like relish the moment and, you know, just immerse yourself in it. But you also want like your friends to like share it with you. Sure. If they're not there. Um, and then I'm sure there's part of it too, where it's like you, you want to show other people that you are happy or that you are, you know, you've made it like in some way spiritually whatever um but with with the criminal activity i think it is just like proving that they're hardcore like like with the baby and that fight in that mall i don't know if you posted it but there is an element of like i need to prove myself to these yeah like, i need to prove that like, no one fucking roll up on me because i will knock your ass out the, the fuck yeah. out yeah i got you i got you yeah man it just seems fun because i remember dude i had a couple i have a couple of nieces who were like younger than me but like they came down here once and were like dude, constantly like smoking weed on their fucking instagram so i'm like bro what are you doing like why are you, like what is the like Wait, yo, who is this? No like people you know yeah a couple of my nieces oh. uh like in their early 20s and i'm like yo there's no dude don't fucking like there's no need for this like you know what i mean They're like i don't want to get in trouble like someone for your job sees this shit and you know god forbid you get fired for some recklessness like um but again, no, I, I i do the same thing bro so i think there's just something that happens like about like that that fucking dopamine that comes from you know getting the views and the likes and all that shit but seeing someone else do it when you're in a clear state makes you like damn bro like am i like that because yeah. that just seems fucking stupid to me. Yeah. And that's why I try not to talk too much shit about it when I when I do see it. Because I know we're all... Oh, we're all guilty. We all, like, we all, yeah, we all need knows... some attention. But some people go way too far. Way too far, bro. And it's also like, you need to know, like, dude, I'm not going to, like... Like, bro, if I'm fucking... If I had a girlfriend, I'm cheating on my girlfriend. There's no fucking way I'm about to post me and the other girl at a club. Because, yeah. like, that seems suicidal. You know what I mean? So like, like, why the fuck would like? It just seems like, why would they fucking? You're doing something illegal. Why are you letting anyone know about this? Yeah, for real. I think for me though, it it mainly bothers me if someone's pretending to be nonchalant and they're uh they're really trying to like brag. So like, you know, someone will fucking have their hand on the steering wheel and be like, it's a clear day outside, but then 
in the bottom right yeah. corners, like the Lamborghini symbol or something. No, shit. dude, my best is those like Insta thoughts who like are taking pictures in like someone's expensive car and their heads like this, so you can perfectly see like the Maserati or Rolls Royce like logo like right there. I'm like, yeah, that's like I know what you're doing, bro. No one cares, bro. Yeah. No one cares. But like, I don't know, man. It's 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 weird. Like it's just, it's just weird because like it, there are so many like. It's like a double-edged sword, bro, because what, when is it okay, when is it not? Um, but I don't know. It's also like the eye of the beholder, right? It's almost like it's how that person's like interpreting in that day. Because sometimes I watch them, like, oh, that's cool, good for them. And sometimes I'm like, bro, like, shut up. You know what I mean? Just shut the fuck up. You know what yeah. I mean? So it really depends. For sure. All right. So, yeah, we got into that uh, 6 9 documentary. Um, all right, bro. Well, I guess the, the biggest thing before we were going to get some of these topics was really the Grammy um, nominations that came out mm-hmm. a few, a few, uh, I guess last week. Yeah. Um, so your thoughts on the big ones, like the Hip Hop Awards um, album or r- song, and obviously some of the snubs, and we can get into that, but what, what were your initial thoughts when you saw all the Grammy things come out? I'm, I'm pulling it right now as we speak to just have it in front of me. Yeah, I'm gonna pull it up as well, you know, make sure I reference it properly. It's technically the is it the 2021 Grammys or 2020 that that's like this official award ceremony coming up? It's uh, I mean it's technically the 2021 Grammys. Okay. Um, let's see. Just pull it up as well. Is it right? So I'll read it. To, I have I have it in front of me right now. I'll read it to us. Uh, yeah. So. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna stick to the hip hop one, but obviously then the big one as far as someone getting snubbed. So, hip hop one for best rap song. And again, this one I have no issue with any of these nominations because all this is where I think they actually got it right across the board. Uh-huh. Uh, Bigger Picture by Little Baby, obvious. Uh, the Box by Roddy Rich, obviously. Laugh Now, Cry Later, Drake and Lil Durk, obviously. Uh, uh-huh. Rock Star, The Baby featured Roddy Rich, obviously. And then Savage remix with Beyonce, obviously. Like you know, what I mean, like mm-hmm. these are all songs. If you look back, were yeah. being played nonstop on every fucking platform, TikTok, yeah. YouTube, the radio. Like this was all you heard. So I have no issues with any of this. It's I think the rap albums that people lost their fucking minds, and I really think rightly so. So yeah. the rap album nominees. So the ones I agree with. King's Disease by Nas. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. Freddie Gibbs and Alchemist Alfredo. Bro, that was a very well received album. Yep. But then, dude, after that, the next three just really were like, really? Like, this is what we're doing? Considering who you nominated for best rap song and those same people had great rap albums. Yeah. So the J Electronica album, A Written Testimony. I mean, dude, for me at least, there's no, no. way that's a nominee. Hell no. That's a- um, the Algory by Royce the Five Nine. I didn't even know he dropped an album this year. Same. Um, and then, bro, again, this one I don't want to shit on, but dude, it's it's to say something. Dude, we have a fucking hip hop podcast, and I haven't even heard this guy's name before. Um, Black Habits by D Smoke. Do you know who D Smoke is? Yeah, D Smoke. So he's the guy who won that uh, that Netflix hip-hop rap performance show or whatever oh, it was like american idol but for rap. B and like chance the rapper and ti yeah. and it turns out he's he's i believe the brother of the singer sir who's on tde so Love he's sir. he's kind of yeah he's, he's been he's basically sir's brother which is funny because uh i saw him on netflix uh d smoke i was like he looks so much like sir like this is weird and then i find out he's sir's brother apparently sir's whole family is like musicians and sir's That's dope. TDE so he kind of did have the TDE co-sign ahead of time but uh he was like I guess that's where what his claim to fame is winning that competition okay so do you think I mean so those three ones that were like kind of odd ones like what are your thoughts on Royce the Five Nine him and then fucking the J Electronica albums being nominated for best album of the year yeah I mean I don't want to see what's not nominated like Roddy Rich is not nominated Little Baby's album's not nominated. Little Uzi Vert's album's not nominated. So what are your thoughts on those albums, you know, missing out technically yeah. because of this? For me, I guess it really depends on the criteria because um, I know a lot of people 
moan and cry when it comes to music saying, you know, real music doesn't get recognized. And if we're talking like real, like hip hop shit, then I, then Royce to five, nine and D smoke are more of that than say like a Roddy Rich or little baby. But if yeah, we're talking- I was, thinking, I was thinking about that point of view too. But I was thinking more like, I, I agree with that. It's like, yeah, it's like, that's the conundrum, right? It's like, dude, we're finally nominating real rappers. Like, why aren't yeah. you happy? But it's almost like the impact certain albums just had on the culture as a whole, right? So yeah. That's where I'm like, really? Like, that's yeah. shit? Yeah, like, I'm that t- kind of person too. I agree with you. Like, if we're talking like substance and impact, then like King's Disease makes total sense. But then when we're talking about like, you know, Jay Electronica and D Smoke and Royce Five Nine, like shit that was here for a moment and like a small subset of people appreciated. I don't know if that makes sense. I feel like there has to be a combination of like, uh, you know, maybe substance and what sort of impact it has. I feel like there is no like winning with this just because because of that. Unless it is a mix, like maybe you have like the three woke quote-unquote albums and then the three like you know vibe party type yeah. artists and then you deliberate and figure out what makes sense but yeah i thought it was really odd too because I, I with the exception of like freddie gibbs and nas i don't know how the other others made yeah, it into I kind even of know. yeah either do i bro like i don't think there's, there's no way even like jay electronica got that email he's like really like me like, there's no way that he was thinking that album was Grammy worthy. I thought it was good. Yeah. Uh, but damn, like, Grammy nominee? Yeah, that shit threw, that threw, yeah, it just threw me off, bro. Because, yeah, I would, they just, they're never going to make it clear what the category is. Um, yeah. But I think the biggest snub, and I think we were, it's funny because I, I, I in, our, in our audio theory Instagram page, I went to archives and, like, literally, like, a year ago, a couple weeks ago, uh, the weekend dropped blinding lights and all that stuff. So the biggest snub was The weekend wasn't nominated for shit, bro. Not mm-hmm. Song of the Year, Record of the Year, or Album of the Year. Even yeah. though he sold the most records, was on the top 10 for the longest time, number one album, number one song. So that, to me, is bugging, bro. Because I feel like if anyone ticks all the boxes as far as good songwriter, good melody provider, great production, and like just loved by... like Who doesn't fucking love Abel? Like, yeah. everyone loves Abel, bro. So, like, he's doing the fucking Super Bowl. Like, this one was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, oh, who I'm glad you brought up that here? up. So, now that you brought up the Super Bowl, what I heard is that the Grammys, that was, like, the compromise was you either, you know, get this Grammy or at least get nominated or you do the Super Bowl. You can't do both. I don't know why that would be. Uh, that, like, that's some, like some fucking Illuminati deal. That fucking sounds like. And I, I don't know why that would be a, a compromise he would have to make in the first place. I, I don't know how they're related. If it has, if it's some political shit, but that's what I read somewhere was that he had to choose between that and the Grammys, and that's why really? it went like that. And if, because I, I can't think of any other reason. Like he's won Grammys before. He. he He's pretty low key and introverted, it seems. So he's not like he's on Twitter spewing off all kinds of crazy shit or is controversial. So yeah, dude. But why would that be the like, dude? I feel like why would that be like? Why would you have to make an ultimatum with your like, uh, like about your career? Like it's either you fucking perform on the biggest stage in America or you get a Grammy. It's like why do I have to choose? Like why do I get both? You know what I mean? Yeah. If I'm the greatest artist of the year, which as far as an artist as a whole, I, I don't really think there's much debate that he had the best year. So that's the crazy shit to me. Like, why the fuck is he getting completely fucking gypped, you know, out of, out of a fucking monumental? Yo, he would have had like probably four or five Grammys this year. Yeah, yeah, that's it's wild to me. And he's the most like obvious one where it's like, all right, something is is up here. Like he's yeah established in the game, clearly a, a mega star, and for whatever reason he was just completely ignored, even though his album didn't even close to flop. No, no, there's, dude, I know, there's plenty of good songs on that album, um, and again, just those three or four standout songs that at least need to get nominated for Song of the Year, because, like, bro, like, oh, you still hear Blinding Lights now, a year yeah, later. Yeah, Blinding Lights everywhere. 10. It's on, like, Blinding Fortnite Lights and shit, I think. Always here. Yeah. So, what do you think, though, as far as, like, 
it was cool to see like big artists coming out and saying, you know, I think Elton John said this is bullshit, um, which is huge. Drake was like, yo, someone needs to come up with a better format. Fuck the Grammys. So what are your thoughts on a year from now, though? Is everyone going to forget about this shit and be like, yo, it is what it is? I think so, because, I mean, as much as we want to hate the Grammys, like it still is that like seal of approval that you made it. I'm sure like your price skyrockets even if you're nominated and don't win anything. Um, like Jack Jack Harlow's now he, everywhere on his Wikipedia or everywhere he goes, he can say I'm a Grammy nominated artist, and not yep. that many people can say that. So, and it's too established. It's not like the Grammys fucking you know started ten years ago. I don't even know how long it's been around. Was it been like fifty years or something? Not longer than that, bro. I think it's like um, hundred years or seventy five yeah. years. Something yeah, crazy. Years, yeah so 61 years ago yeah something crazy um, so it's too i think it's way too established for people to just get rid of it or create their own thing i mean look at the bt awards like i think a lot of artists obviously most of them are black pretty much all of them and a lot of them kind of treat that as like a, a secondary thing sometimes artists don't even show up and they're just like, oh, it's a BT award. It doesn't. No one's putting BT awards in their bio. BT award winner or whatever in their bio. No, God, no. Yeah. I think it, it reminds me a lot of like those years where like no black people were nominated for like Oscars. So like the Oscar then like feels like they have to make it up for, like two years in a row just to, like appease everyone. Yeah. So I'm sure like, there'll be something next year where like the Grammys does something to make sure like you know certain artists are fucking made to feel whole or something. But yeah, my thing is like I get the outrage because I agree like dude that's pretty outrageous, especially like they're they're giving people like ultimatums about what you can and can't do. But I honestly, in a year from now, bro, no one's gonna give a fuck. Like yeah. no one's gonna be talking about this, bro. Because yeah. technically, we should still be in outrage when Mac Miller and Nipsey were nominated for a rap album of the year. And Cardi B won that shit. Like, we yeah. should still be fucking in outrage. And, like, yeah. no one's even talking about that shit. Bro, yeah. so. They should really let the fans... They should have more uh, album options and then let people vote. Uh, it might get tricky in terms of, like, paying people off to vote and all that stuff. But, like, they should have maybe 15 top albums or something just to kind of, you know, make it a little more... Get, add a little more variety and just have the fans choose who the winner is. Because I don't no we i don't think anyone knows who like the 20 people or whatever who choose the yeah, artists the people in the room no because mm -hmm. remember and you I go back they... to all those years that eminem or will smith kept winning it's like really like that's like that's what you think the yeah. people are listening to right now because it's not what they're listening to right now and you know what the worst part about it is is uh the, the grammy what do they call it um not the, the owner but the the committee like lead or whatever said in some interview that he either said directly or implied that they don't listen to the full album all the time so they imagine like yeah i mean with us it's pretty harmless like i might say you know i listened to like the first seven songs of this album and it wasn't what i expected but when you're literally like you could change someone's life overnight by having them be a nominee or a winner like you should listen to every single second of that album every second bro every fucking chord of production that's what needs to happen, bro. Like, yeah, man, that's crazy. So, yeah, that was the, probably the biggest news um, of last week that we wanted to get into. But as always, is this time of the year, Spotify proves why they're the number one streaming platform in the world. So they released their, you know, their their recaps of the year, top, you know, 22, 2020 artists, completely shitting on Apple Music. Um, I just found out, though, I said it to you, Apple Music does have its own version of this, but it's no it's not even close to user friendly you can't post this shit on your thing like it's just <laughs> fucking horrendous um but again spotify proving um that they're number one when it comes to streaming uh uh platform so looking at your numbers though who were your uh your top artists my top artists uh they were tory lanes uh i believe in second place was jack harlow number three nice. was ty dollar sign Number four was Drake, and number five was Chris Brown. I was kind of disappointed how, like, I guess commercial my picks were. I was like, I mean, I wish, like, there was some, like, new person I could show on my feed. Yeah, like, some, like, indie artist. Yeah. yeah. Well, people probably looking at me like, damn, this motherfucker is basic, just looking at the top players. Basic, and stuff. A basic bitch. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> 
And I seriously don't yeah. understand how Tory. This is the second time Tory Lanez, I think, has been my number one artist. I really don't think I listen to him that much. So I'm still. <laughs> like everyone keeps saying, bro, the data, sh- the data shows differently. Yeah. So I, well, I think it's listen, probably the same. You were definitely four, so. listening to him a lot more before all this shit went down, though, too, right? Yeah, but it wasn't like that much. I mean, the data saying otherwise, but I'm like, shit. <laughs> I thought I listened to Jack Harlow way more than him, and Ty Dolla Sign way more than him, and I didn't even know yeah. I listened to Drake that much, to be honest. Yeah, you do, bro. But let me look at let me look up mine real quick. Um. Because my shit was pretty, pretty accurate. Obviously, it's all accurate because it's fucking data. But um, my top artist was Mac Miller. So nice. We, obviously, like you know me, it's not even fucking close. Who like, like, it's not even close, bro. It was fucking Mac Miller, seventy-seven hours worth, and then the next person was Pop Smoke at forty-four. So, Damn. bro, that's almost a full day's worth and a half of another artist over somebody else. Like, that's <laughs> crazy, bro. Shit. But that's, you know what that is, though? is because, you know, I had some long-ass car drives where I would literally just play Mac. Like, everything is Mac's disc- discography mm-hmm. on, like, shuffle. Like, let's let's go. Nice. So, Mac Miller at 77. So, my top five artists are Mac Miller at 77 hours, Pop Smoke at 44, Drake at 38, Future at 27, and Little Baby at 22. My top three albums of the year, no surprise here as far as a number of spins. Dude, I played the new Ty Dolla Sign album 236 times. Damn. I, Shit. I, I played the fucking Savage Mode 2 album 214 times. Wow. And I played Detroit 2. Wait, does that mean year. like 214 songs from, or 214 plays from that album? Yeah, or, yeah, I don't. Think oh, okay. I, yeah, I didn't listen to the whole album and then like. Oh, I was about do to it say. Like, more times. I, you probably know this the words better than him if that was the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Detroit Two uh, was my my other top three, and then my top five songs of the year. I think no real surprise here. Uh, Jack Harlow, What's Poppin', Life Is Good, Complicated by Mac Miller, Dior by Pop Smoke, and Gotti by Pop Smoke and Travis Scott. Nice. But again, the way that Apple shares this shit is so trash, bro. Like, like, bro, like, honestly, like, I don't even know why I fuck with them, bro, to be perfectly honest. Like, there's no reason to fuck with them besides, like, I already have this shit set up. Like, I don't want to, <laughs> like, do another one for Spotify. Yeah. Because I'm seeing everyone, like, like that's, like, the perfect SpongeBob meme where, like, you know, like, they're playing outside yeah. and that, you know, is like, that's what it is, bro. It's like, bro, I'm just seeing all of you guys like, oh, look at this, look at that. I'm like, fuck y'all, bro. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm, And this is like, I wish Spotify paid me to say this, but I really do like love the app. Um, And not even like for the t- 2020 rap shit. Like, yeah, it's cool. Oh, bro, it's like, just the algorithm, bro. They actually recommend shit like, yo, yeah. you would like this. Whereas yeah. my shit is just like, pick whatever you want. We don't give a fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they don't give a fuck on what I'm listening to. Yeah, no, I've definitely uh, come across a few artists um, and the playlists are great. Uh, I like the dark interface, so I'm not leaving. Oh, well, yeah, we, we got that on Apple too now. But, um, nice. But yeah, like for me, like I have to go out and find artists, bro. Like I'm like listening to, you know, underground DJs, blah, blah, blah. Whereas like, I feel like Spotify, like, oh, you like these kind of music? Try these fucking people. Whereas you know, Apple's not doing any of that shit. So mm-hmm. um, shame on you, Apple fucking trillion dollar company like i think you can <laughs> figure this shit out it's all that privacy shit they don't want to they don't want to pay attention to what you like and recommend similar things so like fuck it you're on your own you can't get sued again right like fuck yeah. you bro take this battery that's gonna die in a year like or in a week <laughs> and just fucking figure it out right um all right bro so anything else you want to touch upon throw like obviously spotify wins um quick quick shout out to travis scott who hundred million dollars in partnerships alone this year like just his partnerships so fortnite mcdonald's uh louis vuitton dior nike like bro like wow like wow that is yeah, fucking that's awesome, bro. business man and that's what these artists should be thinking about when they get on is like the bigger picture like yeah dude, not, not the hundred thousand they getting 
fake IDs to fucking yeah. buy a French bulldog in Jamaica. Like, bro, like, <laughs> like I so like, understand this business. Like, when I read it, I'm like, wait, so, like, who's paying for this shit or who's, like, in, intrigued by this? Because I'm not trying to, like, I don't have time for fucking French bulldogs in Jamaica. Like, Yo. just sell drugs or whatever and get the cash. Like, what's all this get extra the cash, shit? Bro, and don't tie this shit back to me whatsoever. But yeah, dude, I mean, Travis Scott definitely laid a bl- bl- blueprint down on way to be fucking super corporate, but still be loved by everyone, bro. Because I don't think there's anyone who's not a Travis Scott fan. You know what I mean? Like, if we want to critique the music, maybe. But, like, everyone really fucks with Travis Scott. So, like, he's laying a whole different kind of blueprint. Um, ASAP Rocky and Rihanna dating. Kudos to him. Secure the bag with that one. I think we always thought there was always something there. But she's always, you know, with, you know, the Arab guy or, you know, the Drake rumors. But... That, that's amazing for him. Yeah, Plus, I think one that one had to make... I don't know, I was just going to say that uh, that relationship, like, every now and then there will be two artists who get together and you're like, okay, that makes sense. I feel like they're one of those, yeah. like, Kim and Kanye. ASAP's, like, into the fashion thing. Like, the girls love him. Every dude pretty much loves Rihanna. She's into, like, her Fenty thing. It just seems like a good match. Yeah, bro, only hood dude from Harlem who could wear fucking designer clothes and paint his nails and everyone's like yeah he's still hood as fuck though you know what i mean but still like pretty flacco bro like yo everyone like yo if you ask me would you be fucking would you trade places to be pretty flacco yes bro and that's before the rihanna thing so obviously even more now but like yo asap's the man so um yeah shout outs to him but bro this thing before we can hop into heat of the week uh, and mine's gonna be repetitive, by the way, and I don't even give a fuck. This is gonna be a first in audio theory where I, I go back to back weeks with the same artist. Nice. But, um, dude, this fucking like uh, monument thing that's being like, is they found it in Utah and then now it's in Romania and it's going to, like, you know what I mean? Like, are we being pumped? Or are we meant to, like, are they really trying to fuck with us and think, like, our aliens are fucking just putting different oh, devices Oh, you mean that in metal them? shit? That yeah, the metal shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By, like, the, when they are hurting the sheep or whatever in utah or something and it was yeah, like in this like, desert it. area and then it disappeared and then apparently it popped up in romania and then disappeared and it's like bro like is this like the you know the the latest version of like the fucking uh crop circles like like what are your thoughts on it bro yeah it's either that or like a group of people who like banksy like artists like very yeah, very I was thinking. centric uh people who are just like for whatever reason that's like cool to them and they're just traveling and fucking building this shit that's like the only option i can make or think of i definitely believe in aliens but i just don't know like what uh signs they would leave obviously none of us yeah. do but i think it is interesting um i wouldn't be surprised i mean this year surprised the shit out of me so i know dude everyone keeps saying like this is the grand finale and i'm just like bro please let it not be so like <laughs> let's just like go to 2021 and just like yeah we got we 20, 20, uh, nine days left for, for aliens to yep. say what's up to Which us. Which is so. crazy, we'll bro. It's fucking December, bro. That's wild. Um, all right, man. Let's get into some Heat of the Week. I think we went through a lot on that rundown. Uh, actually, sorry. Before Heat of the Week, you had some news you had to share about yep. a certain teen pop sensation. So Yes. Actually, it kind of ties into to my Heat of the Week. So we could actually oh, wow. cover it. Oh, yep. wow. Not his, but... It, oh, it's like a backstory. better not be. Like, I don't know what song you're going to fucking play. Like. <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, so, yeah, I'll get into it. Um, my Heat of the Week, Zero Heroes, is a, a mixtape by an artist named XV. I think I sent you an article a week or two ago, but he was he was an artist that actually, like, got me through college in terms of, like, me listening to his, his music. Um, oh, nice. This was okay. back in 2011. He dropped this mixtape. And he, that's, that was the time when like Big Sean, Drake, all these dudes were like blowing up. He actually has Kendrick on the mixtape, a Ooh, beat from I... Jake Paul. He has Sci High the Prince. And at the time, everyone like, this was when blogs were huge and that's how like people promoted their shit. Everyone thought this dude was going to be what like J. Cole and Kendrick are now. And for whatever reason, that never took place. And I was reading the article because I was like, what happened to this dude? And he, he found himself like conflicted and less confident at that time because that's when everyone started doing the melodic rap and yeah. get, like your lyrics it was just like 
how what's your image like how cool do you sound can you sing and shit and uh he said like he he lost confidence didn't like his voice and then he felt pressure to like put out more music and all this stuff so he like went on a hiatus for the past several years essentially in 2017 completely removed himself from social media to focus on like things he wanted to do and then i think something he found himself and basically started making music again and reading that i kind of i obviously haven't like had that level of success in music but it was always something i enjoyed doing in college and then I, when i entered the corporate world i just stopped for whatever reason i think part of it was one i'm like okay i have a real job now like i'm not supposed to be you know quote unquote rapper like that's kind of weird yeah everyone's a rapper now and i think deep down i was like it just felt corny like telling people i was a rapper even though it was just for me to like have fun um but after reading his article i was like shit i kind of want to do this again and not be expected to like prove anything to anyone so this past weekend like just late at night after having a couple of drinks i was just cycling through beats and then i found one i liked and recorded a song over it and spent like five hours on it like that's how much i liked the beat and where it was going oh wow dude and then um ultimately uh actually so i was targeted with an ad from this youtuber who uh knows how to like master songs for pretty cheap so i sent it to him paid him to master it and then i sent it to my brother just to see what he thought because he um was familiar with like my previous catalog and shit and he's like oh i love this one so then that kind of just like boosted my confidence in like revisiting nice. making a mu making music again um and then bow wow uh posted on his page like two days later he's like uh, up and coming artists or like hot artists or whatever dm me and i just did it just because i was like i want to see if he responds he didn't do it for like several days and then he did today and i was like oh shit and then i sent him my link sent it already yeah sent it to him already uh i don't know if he nice. responded yet it was right before we started recording but um i don't know all that happened like super quick and i guess i'm just excited to start making music again um hopefully if if that side of things like gains traction it can help fuel what we're doing with audio theory yeah and just be like a circle type thing um and I'll, I'll let i'll definitely send you the track but i'm gonna i'm trying to get yeah, it on the streaming services, sure. um which is surprisingly a pretty easy process it's like you pay like 20 bucks or something for unlimited songs um so it'll be on streaming services uh hopefully before the end of the month but yeah that's how it went down i was just like randomly bored and wanted to do something creative and then kind of refueled my interest in making nice, music again dude. I'm very excited to hear that. So, are we are we going back under the uh, the Alchemist name or D no, uh, Chemic? Sorry, Chemic I name? just changed it. To, I kept it simple, Blair Anthony. I feel like that. Okay. I wanted also to like rebrand to kind of make it apparent that like I'm at a different stage in my life. Yes. Obviously, 30 now. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not like doing the college type shit anymore. So, yeah, I just kept it simple, Blair Anthony, which is my middle name actually. Love it. So, yeah. Love it. I'm excited, bro. Cool. That might be my audio theory here the week next week. So, uh, send that my way for sure. Um, all right, bro. So, for me, I have two. And it's going to come uh, full circle. But the first one, so it's not full circle, is Bad Bunny dropped uh, his third album of the year, um, which is fucking crazy to me. But Bad Bunny has a bunch of bangers. Um, but one song on his new album that was fucking fire was called um oh, fuck what is it called haciendo que me ama so it's in the translation is making you love me so like it's funny bro because most people think of a bad bunny album it's like it's gonna be a fucking turn up blah 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 dude in yeah. this album the album's actually called before the world ends uh, -huh. uh so this one is i'm uh, oh, sorry the, the, the album is called the the um the last world tour um but the album is really kind of like an emo out like version of him like the most emo version of him you're ever gonna hear bro uh -huh. um and it's just like him being super reflective like the songs about him breaking up with a girl and he's like listen man i don't even care who the fuck's to blame 
If I see you in the street, I'll laugh, I'll smile and keep keep it moving. So I like, go, it's like it really feels like the the first like Latin trap version of like 808 and heartbreaks, like a rapper who gets the other side of the equation when it comes to like femininity, and uh-huh. but it's still saying to like a, a girl like, yo, who the fuck do you think you are? You know, which is what you know what I, I personally feel is what Kanye did on 808 and heartbreaks, bro. Like you know, yeah. like the shit he was saying. You never really heard R and B singers saying that, right? It was always like, "Baby, I love you. Take me back." And he's yeah. like, "Nah, bitch, you did me fucking wrong. Like, what is yeah. wrong with you?" So, um, yeah, Bad Bunny taps into that very heavy on uh, on this album, in particular that song. So I have that to the playlist. But to bring it back full circle, bro, when I tell you I'm in love with this Saint John album, bro, I am <laughs> in love with yo, dude. So much so that that album dropped, bro, a week ago. And that shit's already in my top seven on Apple Music albums of the year. Like, bro, that shit to me, bro, is so good, bro. Like, every song. I'm buying new songs that I like on that shit, right? The only song I don't really fuck with is the future remix of Roses. But everything else, I fucking love. Dude, the Monica Lewinsky song is fucking so good to me. So, yeah, if you haven't heard it yet, people, please go check out St. John's album, uh, While the World Was Burning. Like, bro, it is just so well done. Um, which is weird, bro, because initially for me, I was like, bro, this is going to be a gimmicky, like, he had that one hit, it's never going to be anything. Yeah. Bro, I don't know if that was my feelings, but, bro, it's been a week and a half straight where all I can do is run that shit back over and over and over again. Yeah, he's one of those artists where I'm like, he's never going to, uh, like, he just has something different and special that I don't think you can really get anywhere else, kind of like a Post Malone, as much as yeah. people want to bucket bucket them in and say they're generic like their style and voice is just too different um yeah but speaking of apple music real quick i don't think spotify has that feature where i can like in real time see what i listen to most and shit i think it's not possible well no it's not real time for me either they just came out with this and as a way for you to oh it's it's just like a okay this is just like literally came out today. Like, oh, oh I Spotify thought this was something that this. you can Let's... see anytime. No, 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 no. This is literally okay. just like the 2020 recap, their okay. version of it. Oh, damn. Where you have so then... to go to a different website. It's not even on the app, bro. Like, because you can see your shit on the Spotify app, right? And then yeah. just download it and post it or whatever. Like, I have to go to an Apple Music website, sign in. They run my numbers, and then I have to, like, screenshot if I want to share. I'm like, bro, this isn't interactive, bro. This is trash. But, yeah, no, there's no live time data for me to analyze. Okay, that makes sense then. Um, but yeah, I actually listened to, to some of it um, on the way home from Thanksgiving. Uh, nice. What's, what's the one you mentioned? Switching Sides or whatever? Switching Sides, yeah, yeah. yeah that one was super hard. Um, I heard the Monica Lewinsky one before, which I love. Um but yeah, definitely a, a great dude, album. Dude, what? And dude, uh, on a low-key note, bro, Kanye West, for all his crazy shit this year, bro, some of his features have been fire. Because that feature on the St. John album, Pray For Me, is fire. Like, that whole song is great, but Kanye West delivers. And then his feature on the Ty Dolla Sign album is fucking great. And I think he has, like, one more that we've, we've spoken about, you know, recently. So, mm-hmm. bro... You know, we, we say our shit about him, but he ends up making a billion dollars every year and having a few songs that we listen to. So yeah. he really can't be doing that bad if we think about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, my dude. Anything else you want to touch upon before we uh, get out of here? Uh, Nope. I think I'm good. What about you? I'm good, bro. Well, uh, super excited for you to send me that track, bro. I'm proud of you for tapping back into something you loved heavy, you know, eight, eight or nine years ago. So... Yeah, man, that might be something to definitely, I, I agree with you. It'll definitely help us, you know, bring a lot of things full circle on, on, yeah. on this platform. For sure. Appreciate it. I'm going to do love you. And right, everyone man. go listen, subscribe, um, share your Spotify numbers of our playlists. Uh, you know, support us, goddammit. Yes, do that. Thank you. Peace. Peace.